Between the catastrophic Zapone fiasco and the even bigger Marion Hotel scandal, one starts to notice a pattern about what's really wrong with Irish politics. This is Ben Scallon and you're watching Gripped Media. Now I know, I know, the Zapone story has been done to death by now, everyone in their nan has come out and condemned it for the outrageous cronyism that it obviously is, but beyond the events themselves there are some important lessons to learn here about what's really wrong with Irish politics. To very briefly recap for those who aren't in the know or who need a refresher, ex-children's minister and apparently big favourite of Fine Gael, Catherine Zapone, made headlines in recent weeks when it was discovered that she had put herself forward for a newly made up taxpayer funded job as a special UN ambassador for free speech. It wasn't widely publicised mind you, the government just quietly granted her the position that she'd asked for on the down low. Also bear in mind, you're talking about a woman who has openly supported legislation for social media censorship of quote, inflammatory material, whatever that means, and backed so-called hate speech laws in the past. That is to say that if the government deems what you said to be hateful, which is a subjective matter of personal opinion, then you can have your content removed and you can be prosecuted by the state. And this woman was going to be paid in taxpayer money as a free speech campaigner. When this was revealed, it naturally resulted in an absolute firestorm of controversy with people across the political spectrum accusing the government of cronyism. That is to say, appointing friends to positions of power as a favour. Notably, even Shane Ross, the former Minister for Transport, who was a cabinet colleague of Zapon under then Taoiseach Leo Varadkar, said that even he believed this was an act of cronyism. While the government vehemently denied this charge, even they were ultimately forced to acknowledge their abysmal handling of the situation. And it's hardly surprising. Fine Gael has a long history of waiting until one of their political friends or colleagues loses his or her seat in a fair election before rewarding them with yet another taxpayer funded job as a consolation prize. Think Regina Doherty losing her doll seat and then being appointed as the leader of the Shannad, a Shannad that she had campaigned to abolish less than a decade ago. Even when the people tell one of these politicians to take a hike at an election, they inevitably find a way to end up back on the public teat one way or another. Catherine's opponent from 2015. The practice of appointments to state boards made with a nod or wink has no place in open modern democracy and could damage economic recovery. I mean, what do you even say to that at a certain point? It speaks for itself like. So eventually the pressure just became too great and Zapone declined the job. And so the story ended. That is, until it was found that Zapone had thrown an outdoor party at the Marion Hotel in Dublin the month before she applied for the job, inviting up to 50 guests including Leo Varadkar who was in attendance. While it was initially thought by some that this was a breach of the government's own COVID-19 regulations, the Attorney General rushed in to assure us that up to 200 people were allowed to party outdoors under the law at the time. By the way, nice of the Attorney General to emerge from whichever subterranean cave he's clearly been hiding in for the past year or so as the Irish people's rights are being trampled. You notice that this man is the foremost legal advisor in the country who hadn't a word to say about the longest and most draconian lockdown in the western world, but suddenly when the government is in trouble he leaps out of bed at breakneck speed to try and save them from the people's criticism. Regardless, his clarification came as news to many in the hospitality industry who were not aware that they could have 200 people at an outdoor party, nobody bothered their arse to tell them. God only knows how much revenue was lost by all these businesses who could have had more customers and weren't informed. The Business Post even discovered that Falch Ireland had continually called for clarity from the government on its outdoor rules but were ignored until the government themselves were in hot water and they had to quickly clarify to save their own skins. On and on and on, one catastrophe after another, from golf gates to privileged appointments to miscommunication and dereliction of duty, you have to wonder if this is the most gaff prone government of all time. I mean we have Fine Gael calling for the police to have even more Covid powers and dubbing themselves the party of law and order. Meanwhile the party leader is literally under criminal investigation as we speak. Far too much of Irish politics has either whiffs of corruption or is just an unmitigated catastrophic display of incompetence. One disaster after another. And yet time and time again, at election after election, we put up with it and we vote for more of the same. 
While ordinary people can't find housing, face tax hikes and are in despair at the shambles that the health service is in, all we hear from our elected leaders is scandal after scandal. And maybe that's the real issue here. Not that our political system is rotten, but that we have been willing to put up with that rot and say, ah yeah sure, business as usual for so long. That tolerance of political failure is the part that's most shocking here, and that's the first thing that needs to change moving forward. Please like and share this video, and if you enjoyed it, please consider signing up for a monthly donation via the link on screen to help us produce more content like this. Alternative media like Gripped needs all the assistance it can get, and every donation goes a long way. As always, thanks for watching.